In July 2002, in the south of France, the Cannes Film Festival was taking place. It's one of the most prestigious and exclusive international film festivals in the world. One of the last movies to be screened that year was Gaspar Noé's Irreversible, a psychological thriller about a rape victim who seeps bloody revenge on her captor. After watching it, people lost their minds and their stomachs. And that's not an exaggeration. According to a BBC article, the film physically sickened audiences. Over 250 people left the film early, 20 people fainted, and many more required medical attention after watching it. Now, I've seen a lot of movies, and none of them have made me physically ill, but the film's audience couldn't take it. Some people attributed their shivers and shakes to the graphic nature of the movie, which may be true, but it turns out there was something else that was turning people's stomachs that day. A sound that couldn't be heard. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome content like this. Now, back to the burning question. In a 2003 interview with Salon.com, the director had this to say. We added 27 hertz of infrasound, a low frequency sound which the police use to stop riots. You can't hear it, but it makes you shake. In a good theater with a the subwoofer, you may be more scared by the sound than by what's happening on screen. A lot of people can take the images, but not the sound. Those reactions are physical. In the technical sense of the word, the sounds no way mentions here aren't infrasounds. They're sub-bass frequencies. But the line between the two can be somewhat blurry at times. That's because infrasounds are a somewhat tricky section of auditory science. In simple terms, infrasounds are sounds at this range, the low end of the spectrum. They're sounds below what the human ear can hear. Ultrasounds are on the highest end. We can't hear them either. Sounds, audible to humans, take up the middle section of the spectrum. Human hearing is approximately between 20 and 20,000 hertz. But this is for healthy young adults in a perfect situation, so a lot of us might have those numbers clipped a bit on either end. But today, we're focusing on the slow end of the spectrum. Infrasounds are low booming sounds that are often the result of large scale collisions, like earthquakes or atomic bombs. Sub bass sounds, the ones that often get mixed in with or confused with infrasounds, take place at this range, between 20 and 60 hertz. We can hear these, but the lower they get, the harder they are to hear. For our purposes, we're going to be focusing on the really, really low sounds. Sounds from 30 hertz and below that are felt more than they are heard. Those include infrasounds and sub bass sounds, but for the rest of this video, I'll just be referring to them as really low bass sounds, or RLBS, because they're used to achieve the same effect. When it comes to horror films, your first guess as to what will scare you is probably the jump scare. But the jump scare isn't scary. It's startling, but it's not the thing that you remember most about horror films. What you remember about movies is how they make you feel. And with horror films, that has to do with how they build tension to set you on edge. One of the best ways of, of generating tension is, is negative space. Your brain is occupied and you're looking out for like what's gonna happen you probably aren't realizing that there's this really uncomfortable bed and talking about infrasounds. It's almost like there's something wrong with your hearing because it's like, where's the low end information? It's just not there. So you're just waiting for it and leaning in. And that's, of course, in horror movies, we love to do that before we like land with a big stinger or whatever. That's Sam Ewing. He's a multimedia composer at Sparks and Shadows. Sam's worked on projects like The Walking Dead, Happy Death Day 1 and 2, The First Purge, Black Mirror, and many more. He helped us understand how horror composers and sound designers use auditory elements to unsettle you, whether you realize the sounds or not. Often, it has to do with really low bass sounds. This is totally used um, just all the time. And, and that's, again, that's really effective for just making the audience really uncomfortable. And it's probably not something you would notice even. You know you're in for a thrill, so your body is on edge, but horror movies slow down. Sometimes the characters are just mindlessly going about their lives. 
but you notice you start feeling some butterflies in your stomach. You know something bad is going to happen. You're searching all around the frame, checking to see if the killer or monster is hiding in the back corner. You don't know how you know something bad is going to happen within the next few seconds. You can just feel it. And you're right, you are just feeling it. Suddenly it's like, why do I feel super uncomfortable? It's because we've got a low sub bass frequency. Maybe it's quiet, maybe it's loud. It doesn't really matter, but it's there and we know something bad is gonna happen. That's like textbook horror move right there. Regardless of whether your ears are picking them up, the sounds still have to move through the room. They pass through your body and your body does not like it when they do. That's because our bodies seem to vibrate when they pass through. Remember when Gaspar Noé said, you can't hear it, but it makes you shake? He meant that in the literal sense of the word. At a loud enough volume, it's usually slightly more up and down than it is left to right. The vibrations from the sound resonate with you and you can feel it almost like a pressure enveloping your body. Your body reacts by raising your cortisol levels. That's the hormone that makes you feel anxiety and stress. The vibrations, when resonant enough, can even give you chills, eliciting goosebumps or causing extreme sorrow. It messes with both your brain and your body. Gaspar Noé admits to having these really low bass sounds playing throughout the first 30 minutes of Irreversible. Suddenly, the audience's reactions and necessity for medical attention doesn't seem so crazy. Now, you probably haven't seen Irreversible, but that doesn't mean that you haven't experienced RLBSs. Sub bass sounds that creep up on you from inaudible volumes to chillingly loud decibel levels are used in almost every horror film out there because they're just so effective at making us uncomfortable. In my, my scoring, template that I have here. I have a track that I designed called Low Rumble. I found a sound effect for an earthquake. So I took this sound and I put it into a, an instrument, like a virtual instrument patch. It doesn't produce any audible pitch, like, you know, the cello or the bass or the tuba of an orchestra or, or contrabassoon. But this, this low rumble is so useful for just general low end, like, Tension. Even lower sounds are used on particularly ambitious projects where the directors and sound designers want to go all out in eliciting anxiety from the audience. These sounds were specifically used in Netflix's recent film, The Cloverfield Paradox. The Cloverfield example, I think, is a really good one. That's, that's all sound design. There's a scene where they're walking in outer space, and uh, that's like a perfect place for, for infrasounds. These extremely low sounds were also rumored to be used in paranormal activity to great effect. But as Sam mentions, the effect is difficult to recreate in your living room. That's because the people who make speakers and headphones know that there's a limit to what the human ear can hear. So they don't always spend the money in beefing out the lowest end of their systems. But in high-end movie theaters with really great speakers, it's an effective tool often used. These really low bass sounds are so effective at creating anxiety that they're being used beyond Hollywood. Gaspar Noé noted that it's used to stop riots. This is accurate in certain parts of Europe and at least theoretically for the United States. The idea is that RLBSs, when focused and loud enough, could be a good tactic for non-lethal takedown by inducing nausea and other gastrointestinal disturbances. However, since the sounds are hard to focus, that made them effective for crowd control. Even common household items can give off infrasounds. You would think that these would be really mild and not noticeable, but Vic Tandy would tell you that you're wrong. Vic Tandy was a British lecturer and engineer who really liked his job, until suddenly, one day, he didn't. He felt like things were amiss. He's quoted with saying, I was sweating but cold, and the feeling of desperation was noticeable. But there was something else. It was as though something was in the room with me. He couldn't figure out what changed, but now he frequently complained about anxiety and even worse, paranormal activity. He thought his job was haunted, and he got further confirmation of this when one day he literally saw a ghost. 
But Tandy was a man of science. He knew there was some logical explanation for this. He just had to figure out what it was. One day, while fencing, he noticed that the shaking of his friend's sword gave off a very low booming sound. He was curious to see if something similar might be happening at his job. Upon further research, he realized that it was. Infrasounds from a newly installed extractor fan were being focused directly at his desk, right where he saw the ghost. He discovered that the sounds were coming in at a rate of 18 hertz, a rate so similar to the human body that it seemed to really interfere with his, causing the depression and anxiety. Furthermore, it was so powerful, it actually made his eyes vibrate, causing slight distortions and wobbles in his vision, which she deduced meant that his ghost sighting probably wasn't a ghost, but a minor eye wobble. After using a controlled experiment to test his thesis that infrasounds could indeed mess with the body, he was able to confirm scientifically that this was accurate. His findings were published by Coventry University in the Journal of the Society for Psychical Research. But he wasn't the only one to study this. Similarly, NASA has been studying the effects of infrasounds on the human body since at least the 1960s, and they've come up with similar results for how it just messes with us. At the highest levels, it was shown to cause modulations in speech, a gagging sensation, vibrations in the chest, and a feeling of pressure in the throat. Here on Earth, there's even been complaints by members of communities where windmills have been installed that cite all these problems from anxiety to nausea due to the low humming of the blades. Really low booming sounds are responsible for so much discomfort, and we can't even hear them. From movies to riots to spacewalks to real-life ghost sightings, infrasounds are downright spooky. Many YouTube videos that claim to have these sounds for you to hear are labeled the ghost frequency for obvious reasons. So the next time you go see a horror film or think you've just seen a ghost, just be aware, it might be an auditory illusion. Or it's actually a ghost and you should be very, very afraid. <laughs> If you made it this far, thank you so much for checking out this video. I learned a lot about what it means to scare you with sound, and unfortunately, not all of it fit neatly into this video. If you're looking for more nuance or are just curious about how infrasounds and sub-bass sounds are different and or what they do to the human body, we've left some links in the description below for the articles that we use when researching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you so choose. It really helps us out in creating awesome content like this.